Exciting days indeed. And, and joining us now to discuss it is eToro market analyst, Josh Gilbert. Welcome, Josh. Thanks for having me. Thank, thank you for being here. Uh, so, of course, we, we blasted through the 30,000 level in Bitcoin. Uh, do you think that that's a, a, as bad as much as we're going to see, or do you think we have some room on the upside? Well, look, I mean, firstly, I think it was a significant barrier, um, given that we've sort of been building to this level for, for the past sort of few weeks now. After we had that sort of real breakout, after sort of the banking issues that we've seen, that sort of change in this sort of inflationary and interest rate environment, you know, it, we've sort of kind of been building up to that. Um, and it's sort of finally been been broken. I think that's a, a huge level for, for a number of reasons. The first one is because it's it's a massive psychological level for investors. Um, and secondly, I think this is also the highest price that we've seen since we had all of those issues uh, last year. So the likes of Luna, for example, we're now back above uh, those levels. So I think that that's a massive uh, price movement. And in terms of if we've still got a little bit further to go, I, I think so. Um, I think the key catalyst from here is going to be US CPI. Um, whether that's the driver to the upside or the driver to the downside, um, that, that remains to be seen. But either way, I think that's going to be the key catalyst from here. I, what do you think has driven it so far? Is, is it truly the macroeconomic stuff that we're seeing, the, this idea that, uh, that at least uh, inflation might not be so much of a worry now as it is uh, as recession fears are, and therefore that the, the Fed and other central banks are going to have to start loosening uh, their, their monetary policy versus what it was before? Before. Yet we we still see these the market betting uh, on at least a little, twenty five basis points right uh, hike uh, at the next meeting. I, I, where is this fall? Is it is it a macro story? Is it a is it a more uh, micro story? Uh, people moving funds around uh, for fear and things like that. I think mainly it's it's macro. Um, I think this is the main driver of this rally. I think it's that expectation that inflation falls faster uh, and that interest rates, um, you know, peak and then are cut sort of sooner than expected. I think we go back to the start of March uh, and the, these expectations were completely different, right? We were markets were pricing in at least a couple more rate rises. Uh, inflation was was still pretty high with expectations. You're know, not expecting it to come down as as fast as what we are right now. So I think that's the most significant change. Of course, from the aspect of looking at the banking issues that we've, um, that we've had, I think that's pretty key. I think that's helped the narrative of investors in the sense that if centralized banking systems you know, aren't faring as they should be, um, then they are going to be turning to those decentralized systems that ultimately continue to, to do what they do. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't think that's been the key driver, but it has certainly helped um, you know, crypto assets, but more particularly Bitcoin uh, over these last sort of couple of weeks for sure. Uh, and what's going on with Bitcoin dominance? I mean, that's kind of an interesting thing, especially considering that Ether has been in the news so much. Yeah, well, look, I think what we're really starting to see is that investors are just continuing to look for, for that haven. Um, and, and sort of Bitcoin was sort of the, the, the asset that investors turned to, you know, initially when, when, this, um, when this crisis really started to, to first, hap- first start. So I think that was what we've really started to see is that Bitcoin has sort of remained the most dominant crypto uh, amongst investors, for sure. We, we continue to see that. Um, and given its performance, it's also outperformed most altcoins, including Ethereum, which is pretty unusual uh, given the cycles that we've previously seen. When we do start to see these these big moves from crypto, you know, we've got 80% move here from, from Bitcoin so far this year. You would expect to see altcoins uh, outperforming Bitcoin, but that's not the case. I think the reason that is, is because we had so many issues issues in 2022. Investors are still, you know, a little bit nervous about what happened there. They're not really willing to move completely, um, you know, into those sort of riskier altcoins, if you like. Um, And instead, they're they're looking for that quality in Bitcoin. Um, And I think ultimately, when we've seen sort of other assets continue to, 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 to increase in volatility, Bitcoin is actually, you know, its volatility is dropping. We understand its risk much better now. And I think that it's becoming a a much clearer part of of asset allocation for for most investors. Um, And I think that's why we're seeing this dominance. So there are several causations for this dominance. But where do you see de-dollarization playing out, given that there are so many countries, so many regions that are promoting crypto just as the U.S. is regulating by enforcement or retribution, whatever you want to call it. 
Look, I, I think there's a, there's a long way to go in, until we sort of see that de-dollarization, absolutely. Um, obviously, what we've seen in the last sort of few weeks has only highlighted Bitcoin's fundamentals. Um, I think that's that's clear um, in, in the sense that if, you know, as I said earlier, if, if people are feeling uneasy about centralized systems, they will move to, to those decentralized systems. But it also comes as, you know, a bit of trust as well, right? We're, we're starting to see that people want to take advantage over those finances. They want to essentially be their own bank, which is, which is what something Bitcoin can offer. And I think that in terms of what we've seen just globally in terms of geopolitical tensions over the last couple of years as well, there's just such a bigger push towards using crypto assets. That adoption is, is obviously going to probably be some way off. Again, we're definitely going to need some sort of regulation in that time as well. I think that's needed in terms of helping crypto investors um, participate in markets, uh, but also protecting them at the same time. So, you know, th there's a long way to go. And, and ultimately, we fully support any regulations that can help move the industry forward and, you know, push forward technolo technological advancements, but also protecting investors at the same time. Very briefly, because we are out of time, uh, you know, Ether's highly anticipated Shanghai upgrade, also called the Shanghai Capella hot fork, is set to occur tomorrow. We know about that. Some people have actually called it a proxy war between Bitcoin and Ether. What's your take on it? Well, look, I think the Shanghai, Shanghai upgrade is, is important for, for a number of reasons. It, it sort of really allows users to, you know, fully stake their assets. And there's been question marks over, um, you know, the, the staking being released and some short, short, short term pressure in terms of selling. But I think it's the complete opposite of that. I think this is, you know, hugely positive for the fact that you have that flexibility to be able to stake on Ethereum uh, and obviously be able to unstake at any point. And, and that's huge. We've not had that on Ethereum for, obviously mm -hmm. over two years now so although we may see some short-term selling pressure in terms of um you know that sort of news rumor coming through it's also going to be released in stages as well so you know the the real effects of the market i i don't think is really going to happen there in terms of that comparison to to sort of bitcoin look i still think they're two completely separate assets i think in terms of of what um, you know, Ethereum is looking to do in terms of its upgrades. I think it's, you know, well ahead of, of Bitcoin in that sense, in terms of, you know, decentralization and what it can offer in terms of DeFi. Um, I think that, you know, it's, it's absolutely well ahead, but Bitcoin sort of remains that, that prominent peer to peer network. Uh, and I think it will remain that way for, for many years to come. All right. Thanks so much for that, uh, Josh. Uh, pleasure to have you on. And once again, uh, that was eToro market analyst, Josh Gilbert.